Sleep. Sleep well. Think well. It's not the most comfortable way to earn an entry in the Guinness Book of World Records, obtain an A on a high school science fair project, and meet a world-famous scientist. In 1965, 17-year-old Randy Gardner decided that his science fair project would involve not sleeping for 11 straight days and observing what happened. To the astonishment of just about everyone, he accomplished the feat, setting a world record that year for sleep loss. The project attracted the attention of scientist William DeMent, who was given permission to study what happened to the teenager's mind during the week and a half he was awake. What happened to Randy's mind was extraordinary. To put it charitably, it started a malfunction. In short order, he became irritable, forgetful, nauseous, and to no one's surprise, unbelievably tired. Five days into his experiment, Randy began to suffer from what could pass for Alzheimer's disease. He was actively hallucinating, severely disoriented, and paranoid. He thought a local radio host was out to get him because of his changes in memory. In the last four days of his experiment, he lost motor function, his fingers trembling and his speech slurred. Curiously, on the final day, he was still able to beat Dement at pinball, doing so a hundred consecutive times. Some unfortunate souls don't have the luxury of experimenting. They become suddenly and permanently incapable of ever going to sleep again. Fatal familial insomnia is one of the rarest human genetic disorders that exists, affecting only about 20 families worldwide. That rarity is a blessing because the disease follows a course straight through mental health hell. In middle to late adulthood, the person begins to experience fevers, tremors, and profuse sweating. As the insomnia becomes permanent, these symptoms are accompanied by increasingly uncontrollable muscular jerks and tics. The person soon experiences crushing feelings of depression and anxiety. He or she becomes psychotic. Finally, mercifully, the patient slips into a coma and dies. So we know bad things happen when we don't get any sleep. But... Considering that sleep occupies a walloping one-third of our time on the planet, it is incredible to contemplate that we still don't know why we need to sleep. Not that there haven't been clues. One came about ten years ago from a group of researchers who left a bunch of wires stuck inside a rat's brain. The rat had just learned to negotiate a maze when it decided to take a nap. The recording device was still attached to those wires and it was still on. But to understand how this relates to the purpose of sleep, let's look at what the brain is doing while we sleep. You call this rest? If you ever get a chance to listen in on a living brain while it is slumbering, you'll have to get over your disbelief. The brain does not appear to be asleep at all. Rather, it is almost unbelievably active during rest, with legions of neurons crackling electrical commands to one another in constantly shifting patterns, displaying greater rhythmical activity during sleep, actually, than when it is wide awake. The only time you can observe a real resting period for the brain, where the amount of energy consumed is less than during a similar awake period, is in the deepest parts of what is called non-REM sleep. But that takes up only about 20% of the total sleep cycle, which is why researchers early on began to disabuse themselves of the notion that the reason we rest is so that we can rest. When the brain is asleep, the brain is not resting at all. Even so, most people report that sleep is powerfully restorative, and they point to the fact that if they don't get enough sleep, they don't think as well. That is measurably true, as we shall see shortly. And so we find ourselves in a quandary. Given the amount of energy the brain is using, it seems impossible that you could receive anything approaching mental rest and restoration during sleep. Even if the brain doesn't behave itself bioenergetically, other parts of the body do rest during sleep, in something like a human version of microhibernation. That introduces a second puzzle. Sleep makes us exquisitely vulnerable to predators. Indeed, deliberately going off to dreamland unprotected in the middle of a bunch of hostile hunters, such as leopards, our evolutionary roommates in eastern Africa, seems like a behavior dreamed up by our worst enemies. There must be something terribly important we need to accomplish during sleep if we are willing to take such risks in order to get it.